Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of A Contagious Smile, where every smile tells a story. I am so excited to have Carlos with us today. He is a medium and I have never had the pleasure of working with a medium before. And even though we're not doing it on this episode, I just want everybody to get to know this amazing individual. I've had the um, the benefit of talking to him prior to recording. He is a wonderful human being. He has a great soul. I want to thank you so much, Carlos, for taking time out of your amazingly busy schedule to speak with us today. Thank you so much, Victoria. Thank you for having me on the Contagious Smile podcast. Uh, it's a blessing to be here uh, with you and uh, with your audience to share some of my story and, you know, hopefully promote, uh, you know, that uh, the journey is 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 worth uh, sometimes the pain because there's always the light that shines every, everything that we experience and stuff like that. Absolutely. I tell everybody, even if you feel like your inner light is gone, you still have that spark and it only takes a spark to start a wildfire. So absolutely. I love that about the light. Tell me a little bit about your story. So I, you know, I, I grew up a regular normal life. Uh, you know, I, uh, my parents brought me here when I was a little kid. Um, you know, uh, and I played soccer, I grew up in, uh, you know, I, I played in the woods with friends. Um, and, you know, as, as I was growing up, I also spent time in the military afterwards, I enlisted in the, in the military for a few years. And I went to college, I had a very normal life. But, you know, I ended up experiencing my 20s, some very chronic uh, health issues, uh, very chronic and painful, very painful. And I was complete, I was very, I was, uh, I was debilitated, I was suffering. Um, and I'll, I'll share what some of these health issues were. But the, the, when I was in my early 20s, that I started experiencing, I just woke up one day with chronic headaches. Um, so, you know, I was like, okay, well, maybe I um, dehydrated, or maybe I drank too much the other day or something, you know, or maybe I'm just have a headache. And I went to the clinic and, um, and they basically told me, hey, take some of these um, headache meds or migraine meds, and it'll knock it out. And okay. But after a few days, nothing went away. And, uh, you know, I ended up trying to I was, I was suffering silently and I couldn't figure out why a lot of tears were coming down my, uh, my eyes because I, the pain wouldn't go away. And the thing about the, those headaches were I woke up with them and I went to bed with them. So the worst. yeah. And the thing about it was like, the only time I didn't have a headache was when I was sleeping. So that was, and it was just like, I had like a new friend that was on my, you know, over my skull, uh, my scalp. And it was very painful. You know, I always tell people like the pain, if I could uh, scale it from one through 10, 10 being the worst, you know, it was, I would say it was a constant seven or eight. Um, and sometimes it got to a nine, even a 10, but uh, it, it just, it was just like this blanket of pain over my head. Overall. Or the light even hurts, right? Uh, no, luckily the light didn't bother me, but I just felt this tension, this pain of blanket of pain over my head, my scalp. And, you know, I, I didn't, and the worst part was I kept going to the doctors and they couldn't figure it out. So they ended up uh, flying me back to the United States because I was in, the, I was overseas in the military at the time. And uh -huh. they took me to one of the major hospitals they have. Um, and there uh, I went up and down through the facility, you know, they had MRIs, CT scans, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, they couldn't figure out exactly what was causing. And I even talked to neurologists and everything and, you know, they couldn't figure it out. So, uh, you know, I experienced this pain for, you know, four years, uh, exactly from 2003 to 2007. Um, so I had it for four years. And what, what's very interesting about pain and also suffering, um, you, when you're in that battle, that storm, you don't really see the light ahead. You just, all you see is the, the, the whirlwinds, the, the, the heavy storms, the darkness, uh, you know, all that's all you see within your peripheral vision, immediate, you know, within your surroundings. Right. But as time goes by and you fast forward years, years later down the road, you can connect the dots and be like, this is why I may have gone through this. Or this is what my experience was. This is how I overcame it. This is how somehow or another through uh, faith or however one chooses to believe in uh, what their what their beliefs are. My, my rescue came, you know, my SOS was answered. And what happened was I, um, like I said, I, um, I ended up getting out of the military with these headaches. Um, and, uh, you know, I ended up going to graduate school and uh, I had a, a friend's uh, mother who um, she, I started getting sick with some other things. Uh, and I started kind of passing out all the time and just being really exhausted. 
And on top of my having my headaches, which I never shared with many people, um, I was having those issues. And my friend's mother kind of, she was at like a salon or a spa one day. And she overheard of this really good doctor that, you know, um, could uh, diagnose people basically. And he was just a kind of a mad scientist, but he was a medical doctor. So she took his number and she called me. She says, sweetie, I'm going to help you. There's someone that I, that I heard is really good. And I was just like, at that point, it was like, you know, uh, it was probably like 2006. So about three years or, or so had passed. And I was like, eh, or three and a half years, maybe. Yeah, three and a half years. I was like, whatever. I, I'm, I was just pessimistic. I was skeptical. Sure. I was, that doesn't that doesn't apply to me. You know, I've seen every doctor. And, you know, and I was also sick. I was tired, lethargic. You know, I was passing out at times, just like, just, and I was like a zombie basically walking with headaches too. And so I ended up going to see him and like he was just, I just based on my just, uh, description of my symptoms, he was uh, able to diagnose without providing me an, an actual diagnosis based because I was pending blood work and other exams, but he's able to figure out what was causing my headaches. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I had, was I like was, a doctor house. Mm -hmm, yeah, it was, it was very miraculous, but like the thing about was it very interesting was that I didn't tell him about the headaches. Um, I basically told him, I was describing my symptoms of just being exhausted, tired, fatigued, burnt out, and just having no energy drive and just brain fog, all that stuff. And uh, he, he mentioned to me like, hey, do you also have headaches? I said, yes. He goes, do they hurt around here? And he started pointing, you know, different areas of my scalp. And I go, yes. He goes, I know what's causing that too. And I was like, no way. And I was still skeptical. And I was like, whatever. And you know, he did uh, the proper blood work to, to just confirm his, uh, you know, his, his gut, uh, or, you know, his medical expertise that, he, you know, and, you know, uh, he diagnosed me with uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, which is an autoimmune condition. And I'm not that smart. So <laughs> I don't know what was causing uh, the headaches, but it was, I believe it had to do with nerves uh, that were connecting up the, the brain or the head or something like that, that were, you know, or originating in a different part of the body. But he said it was something like trigeminal neuralgia, which is very painful. And so um, out of uh, that visit, I ended up getting two things resolved. The, I got my, my life back because I started feeling normal and energetic and strong and I lost weight. But I also, which never was able to get solved was my headaches. They, after like two weeks of like getting on the right medications and stuff, my headaches one day just went away. And I've, and this is 2007, wow. probably like March-ish or April-ish. Uh, you're looking at what, three, uh, 13, 15 years. I've never yeah. had a headache, headache like that since. Obviously, sometimes like a, I'll get a little bit of a headache if I'm dehydrated or I'm stressed out or, you know, I'm having but bad Nothing posture. like the other. No, 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 nothing, nothing. I've never experienced that pain ever again. So he, he completely resolved my issues. But my point to that story was that was part of those. Those were the initial uh, awakening. That was the awakening for me and part of that storm, that battle and in my own moments of suffering. But I, I noticed that one thing I came out, I came out victorious because it, regardless of what was going, what I was going through, there was some, there was a bigger picture to it and I didn't see it. I didn't have the lens to it, the camera to it, or the, or understanding. I just lived in the moment and I didn't, I couldn't do anything else because I didn't have any other resources. You know, you can cry for help, but sometimes that help doesn't get answered right away. So, right. You, you know, and I'm sure a lot of your, um, your, your listeners have been through, you know, many, uh, many years of suffering, pain and battle and just a very arduous, slow road, but there's always hope. And there's always that light in the end. That's and it's sometimes all you need is that little spark, the little, little, little spark of light to start a wildfire and, uh, you know, and, uh, uh I've shoot. heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. I may have stole that one from you, <laughs> That's <all> right. <laughs> right? <I'll share. laughs> but yeah, but what, what do I, what, what else did I learn from this? Um, I believe that 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 suffering that I experienced, that pain, that battle that I went through, that darkness that I was in, my own darkness, um, I learned to embrace the moment, but also be grateful for what I had in my life. And uh, whenever I get caught, I'm kind of pinch, or I'm in a very dark moment myself, or of something else that comes in my life that I'm not sure how to proceed about, I always reflect on that and how, when I was completely lost, there was a ship to come out and rescue me from that dark sea. And that's kind of what I, what I take from that experience. And I didn't ask for that. I asked for that ship through prayer and faith and hope, but it, that ship didn't come anytime. It didn't come right away. But right. when it did, when it did come, it came in strong. It was an armada. 
you know, wow. yeah, it was an armada that came to rescue me and uh, I'm forever grateful. And I've had other health issues since then. I won't elaborate too much, but you know, that was probably one of the most profound experiences of healing I've ever had. It also uh, made me more sensitive to people and allow me to cultivate compassion, empath empathy, understanding, love for others more profoundly than I've experienced because once you're in that darkness, you can un you can relate to other people's darkness. It may not be that I've been a victim of domestic abuse or violence, um, but I've been in my own darkness that can allow me to be like, I've suffered. I can understand that. I can't understand your pain, your suffering specifically because I haven't been through that, but I can empathize with you and I, I want to help with right. how I can and I don't want to judge your situation. Right. And we also work with special needs too. And a lot of right. those families you know, have been through their own personal health. It's the best way to put it. There's no other easy way to put it. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So, you know, I'm so glad that you've gotten rid of those headaches and that you're on the right road now. Yeah, I'm, and I am too. I'm very grateful myself. <laughs> yes. I have to ask, how did you realize that you had this gift? That's the funny thing. I did not realize it. I always, people ask me, I did not, I did not want to become a medium or so I didn't, I wasn't seeking this. I, I, you know, I had a very normal upbringing, sports. I was, you know, I uh, was raised, uh, you know, as a Catholic, um, you know, I, um, I played with friends outside, got in trouble, you know, I, I played with fireworks, you know, boy stuff. I got myself, my hand, yep, got my hands dirty on the creek, building forts. But um, it was after those headaches, I began having some other issues, some gut issues, health issues uh, with my stomach. And, um, I, I basically, I went to a, a small little uh, uh, meeting that a friend drew, drew me to uh, and they had uh, mediums there and uh, I wasn't, you know, that's not something I was into. Uh, my mom, my brain wasn't wired that direction. Yeah, I was always spiritual and I guess somewhat open, but uh, at this, at this message event of mediums, um, they gave me some very specific messages about my life that I had not shared with people. And, uh, you know, and they also brought through some loved ones. And I was like, wow, how did they do that? You know, I was very fascinated by it, uh, yeah. intrigued, but also kind of, was, I was leery. I was like, uh, you know, I don't know. And, um, but, you know, I ended up talking with one of those persons afterwards. And he, he basically told me, he's like, you have a very beautiful gift that you're going to share with the world one day. And I was like, you know, because I, I came from, a you know, uh, military, but slash also, um, aviation background at the time um in in air operations and i was like you know i have a different career track in mind for myself okay. and i that's not something i was really looking forward to or considering even going down that road to uh pursue as in a path of you know spiritual mediumship or being a light worker in the holistic field never within my radar ever even growing up or so but he ended up telling me I had a gift and I was going to share that with the world. And, you know, and he said, you know, in so many, so many, many years, you'll, 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 you'll do it and stuff. And I said, uh, what kind of gravitated my attention and I guess my curiosity was he knew a lot about me uh, from just the conversation, just the immediate conversation about a lot about my suffering. I just, in, in many ways, I'm very private and I don't like to share that story with many people, a lot of my suffering and pain. Sure. Um, and he knew a lot about it, but he also brought through a lot of loved ones. And, and once I kind of, after I start, I stopped talking, after I had to finish that conversation with him, um, I started connecting the dots and like, you know, my life's been very, uh, you know, up and down. It's been a sidewinder road there. Uh, and, you know, what if I was like, what if this is why I've been through so much uh, personal suffering with my body physically. And it was kind of, if you will, a transmutation um, of sensitivity to yes. allow me to embrace that light that I had that was just uh, dormant all those years. Um, and I ended up embracing it, that, that calling and I ended up, you know, doing exactly kind of how he recommended. And I started that path and I, you know, I began training and he mentored me, but I also went to, uh, you know, um, a place where they were, they, help, they can help you develop that that training. And it's many, many, many years of practice. At first it wasn't like, you know, voila um but it 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 it's something like i the best way he can explain it and i can explain it to you is that uh it's like when someone has been in a very bad automobile accident and they have to learn to re walk again um after, you know i had to basically relearn how to do this i guess within that was in me um and 
you know, I started out slow, but before you knew it, I, over time, I started kind of like trusting that uh, sense, those extra senses I had that I, that were there. And, uh, you know, before I know it, I, you know, was able to uh, leave a career I had and uh, do it full time. So it took me about, uh, I'd say about nine years to practice, develop and uh, cultivate a little bit of a following. And one day I just said, I'm going to leave my full time job and do this full time and see what happens. And it's been in April before years running strong. <laughs> oh, good for you. Good yeah. for you. Mm-hmm. So how is it that you're able to connect with with the spirits? I know well, these might be really unusual questions, but I have, I'm so clueless on this entire subject and I'm so intrigued by it. Well, you know, I, I so what I kind of how I, I how I view it, uh, my 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 opinion on it or uh, experience has been that. The, there's everything in the universe is comprised of energy, whether we see it or not, uh, vibrational energy. And uh, what uh, what we're dealing with is that we're we are we are antennas. Uh, if we can we can look at that one way of looking at it, and we just we're picking up a signal uh, from spirit. Um, that that vibration that spirit resides is in is a very 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 infinitely high vibration of pure love and, and peace and happiness, uh, harmony. Um, beautiful energy uh, light uh, infinite light and uh, what we do is uh, we raise our energy up we raise our vibration and as we raise that vibration that that energy through law of attraction or you know like attracts like that energy starts coming to us and we're able to pick up uh, in very subtle ways uh, those those energies those vibrations that exist in the universe um it's it's not an exact science uh i would say that it's it's a it's a very creative spiritual craft um and you know how and to answer your question a little more um uh candidly is a lot of times you're just feeling them around you you feel their energy so it's kind of like when you walk into a room and you feel someone's energy or you feel the room's energy or if you're in a place and you're like at an old motel or something you're like ooh, ebgbs i don't feel good in this place it's creepy here uh well it's not that how i feel when i connect with spirit i don't feel creepy or weird or anything but you start feeling like okay maybe i'm not the only person here in this room right now and then you start sensing that maybe there's a father figure in spirit um and before you know it you kind of kind of close your eyes or you get a little bit of a uh, of a quick uh vision um it's kind of like daydreaming um and as you as you as you kind of get a little thought pattern going on you start noticing that maybe there's a a, a boy scout uh, or uh, that was a basically a boy scout leader or so a parent that was in that's in spirit and it's like a father figure and before you know it maybe you see a cigarette in his hand and uh you know and then they kind of you start seeing little images or you may hear a name or you may hear a, a phrase or something that's relevant to that person or and you may also sense like how they're coming through or do they have a very friendly personality or are they very reserved um uh, you know or just uh it just depends on how they want to express how they communicate and uh, you know you just you just go with the flow of those thoughts or the sensations you pick up and before you know it you're you're having uh, some form of conversation with that that vibration um and it's it's you, you you can't continue that that conversation forever it's a it's a it's, you get a little bit of a limited window um and you just go with the flow and the the, the hardest thing about mediumship is trusting that connection right. and trust trust in that connection because it is not like uh the conversation we're having right now between um one um you know one server to another server and uh the, you know the lines of communication just are continuous uh right. it's a different dynamic it's a different connection uh but when that come in, connection comes in strong, it comes in strong. Um, but a lot of times you're just sensing the subtleties that are in there that are coming through and uh, how they and, and how they come through. And the other thing with it is uh, once when you open that door, basically through intention, you uh, different loved ones will come through. So it's so not, not necessarily like, you know, I, well, I really want to hear from my dad and my mom and my sister. You may get Uncle Larry that says hi, you know, you, you may get a dog that was named Bart or something, you know, or, or something like that, you know what I mean? And uh, they just express themselves. And one of the biggest messages they have is love, for one. Uh, I love you. I miss you. Um, you're doing great. I miss you, you know, and uh, sometimes they, they're, 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 they're there to apologize for the pain they cause their, their, their loved ones on earth. How does that feel? I mean, I can imagine hearing like, you know, my grandparents meant the world to me and they've passed. <clears throat> and to to even think that I would get a message from them, it, it, it like makes me so feel warm and love and like, like almost like I'm getting hugged. Right. But 
to get something from someone that's done harm, how does that, how do you handle that? Because I would feel like, like you know the ebgbs in a way i guess is the best way to explain that it's like i got chills down my back when you were saying that you know somebody wants to apologize for what they did to, to help someone heal and i appreciate that but how do you as this person doing this amazing gift handle when you hear something that's such a negative caused such pain how do you deal with that well you going back to some of my painful experiences as a medium or before I became a medium, you know, you have that light that allows you empathize with people to uh, express compassion. Um, so it's a two way street. Um, so as they're communicating uh, their, their sorrows and uh, their, their, uh, their calls for forgiveness, uh, you can understand and, um, you know, pass that along and be, uh, you know, uh, an, obje uh, an objective, uh, you know, vessel of light to communicate to the, the, the other party present. Okay. And, you know, the goal is to help people um, heal and yeah. promote it, uh, uh, however means it comes through. And if it's the readings just for that, then what a wonderful experience for the person, but also for the soul to hopefully gain, gain closure uh, from passing that message along to that person that for what the harm they may have done. I think like, cause you know, and I don't know all the answers. I'll be very honest. With you. I don't know all the answers. I don't know what happens when we quote unquote pass away. I hope it's a beautiful experience and that, uh, you know, um, uh, we see a, we see a much bigger, bigger picture of our lives and our, what our purposes were. But, you know, I have my, my gut tells me then based on my experience doing readings and helping people at times with it has told me that, once pe once we cross over, we do see a bigger picture. And then we also get to experience some of that pain and suffering we cause others through our words, actions, uh, decisions. And uh, so, you know, we may be seeing things right now through just uh, a certain um, angle through our lens. But I, I is my belief that once we cross over, we see a 360 degree, um, you know, lens of what all our decisions and actions and how that played a role in, in, in others and stuff like that and how they, what they experienced as a result. So, you know, I, I feel that this, those souls that cross, those that cross over and are in spirit um, then have remorse. Um, you know, they have um, sadness, pain for what they did. Um, and at times also, they also experience happiness, joy, and love for the good things they did. Um, and obviously the ones that cause less, cause less harm, have a lot more to uh, experience that love. I think I, I also view things as, uh, you know, how your light shines upon others is well, how that light comes to you one day when we cross over. So the more light and love there is in one life, the more probably you're going to experience when one crosses over and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, uh, it's one of those things that I, it's like, you know, a, a, a universal principle, the golden rule. Right. Carlos, what have you found to be the most surprising experience doing a reading? I've had a few of them. Um, I've had a few of them that, you know, just kind of blew me away where I was like, wow, like, you know, how does, I don't understand. I'm just a little, little ant here in this infinite universe that we're in. Um, but uh, I, I'd say like two that kind of stick to mind where I, I, I was reading for one young lady and, uh, you know, I was just doing my regular work and seeing who came through and, you know, identifying them, uh, validating them. And I saw Kermit the Frog come up and I was like, it's kind of very random, you know, because I just saw a vision of Kermit the Frog uh, show up as a puppet in my mind. And I was like, that's weird. And I was like, you know, a lot of times when you're doing these readings, like, like I told you, trusting is the hardest part of the reading um, and having confidence to deliver that message. Uh, but I said to her, and I always say this to clients, like, all right, you're going to think I'm coming from like left field or whatever, and you're going to think I'm weird and crazy, but I don't care at this point. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, so I, del I delivered the message that, why would one of your loved ones show me something with Kermit the Frog? What's with the Kermit the Frog? And she kind of looked at me puzzled, and I was like, okay, okay, well, well. <laughs> um, and then she said, oh, you know what? She goes, that's right. She goes, my grandmother was good friends with one of the voices of Kermit the Frog during the show. And that was like her called a fame or happened that just she was it was a highlight of her she was like best friends with one of the persons that did the voice like they were best friends so uh -huh. she said my grandma used to always kind of like 
tell me like, hey, did you know I'm friends with uh, so-and-so that does the voice for Kermit the Frog on the TV show, The Muppets or so, or one of the people that does it. And so she was like, that, that's my grandma. Cause she always brought that up when I was a little kid. So, you know, that was something very special for that person. Um, yeah. So that was one of those stories where I was just like, I was blown away and stuff like that. And uh, another one was with a client that um, she was just, I think she asked me something like, uh, do you, uh, I just want to, I just want to confirm that my, uh, my mother's always there with me, um, you know, because we brought through different people, but her mother didn't, uh, uh, I guess, wasn't coming through sh as strong, you know, to confirm her, if you will. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, I raised a little bit of the energy through my thoughts and, you know, uh, through positive mantras real quick. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I saw a, a vision of, uh, of um, uh, Sister Act, uh, the movie with Whoopi Goldberg. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, I, I don't know, but I, I just saw your, I saw a, a, a lady show up and she's smiling in, in my, in my thoughts here in my vision. And uh, then I saw Whoopi Goldberg and uh, Sister Act. And I was like, I, that's, that's what I'm getting. And I'm, you know, and I'm just delivering the message. Uh, and she kind of looked at me laughing just, and I was like, okay. Uh, you know, and next thing you know, she goes, you know what, Carlos? She goes, I know what this is. I go, what's that? She goes, I was, um, I was one of the uh, actresses in Sister Act um, and I didn't get the role, but um, I was, I guess one of the sisters maybe, um, uh -huh. but I didn't get the role and uh, I don't tell people about it. I used to be a singer back when I was very young um, and she doesn't do, I guess she didn't do that for a living. She has like a regular job, but when I was very young, I got one of the roles and uh, I ended up, uh, they ended up giving it to someone else, but my mother knew when, when I got that role, even though I didn't get it, they picked me, but they picked, ended up picking someone else from a different city, I guess. She said, my mother knew how much that meant to me. My mother knew how much that meant to me. So for you to tell me that, that's, that's just like, huge. you know, that's, that, yeah, it's, it's huge. It's massive to my, my, my heart here because my mother knew how, how, how special that was to me and stuff like that, you know, and just different other things will come through. Sometimes like a spirit will say, um, you know, I, I, there's, they'll talk about wanting to wear specific shoes or, or, you know, or tennis shoes at, 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 in their funeral. And before they, you know, and they, that's what their expression was before, you know, telling the family and the family ignored it. And they're, and I'm telling the client, there's something about maybe wanting to wear sneakers or some type of shoes or something. Um, and, you know, and apparently maybe it wasn't done or do you know what they mean by this? And they're like, Oh my God, that's what that person wanted. They want to be buried in like Nikes or something like that. Um, and we were like, afterwards after the person died we can't do that we can't do that you know and then you know and then it's like they're they're you know they're like wow you know there's something more and i'm like wow there is something more right uh, and so you know you try to you try to uh share sh hope your hope is to bring through um love and uh you know uh, validate your love those loved ones for those people and uh you know sometimes you end up hitting a grand slam and bringing a very beautiful message like that um, that will so stay with them forever absolutely ever. absolutely and and a lot of times and sometimes and it's not always the case sometimes you bring them things that maybe like just they know very privately deep in their hearts and you know um and stuff like that so it's just uh it's just a matter of having faith when you're doing the work and uh you know, you don't like, you don't, you don't always, you don't, you're not always going to have uh, masterpieces uh, with this creative art. Sometimes, you know, you kind of, you have, uh, uh, you're, you're doing your best, but the, the goal is always to help someone with it. And uh, to, well, Carlos, you know, broken glass makes gorgeous stained glass pieces. That's, I never thought about that. And that's beautiful. Actually. I love stained glass windows. I do too. It's breathtaking. It, it is. It is. It's like one of those things that's like very archaic, uh, but it's like, it, it stands the test of time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you are a gift to so many already and i cannot wait I, I i just cannot wait i know how many of our amazing we we're a family our we don't have listeners we're a family and i've been so gifted to be able to work with some amazing people and i hate how we've had to meet under the circumstances <laughs> but they become family and i've been doing this for almost 17 years and wow. i still talk to people i have worked with 17 years ago and so I, I know what an honor it is that so many of our family will be able to reach out and, and have you work with them. So I cannot thank you enough for that. I'm just so like, I feel so warm. I feel like I'm getting this big secret hug right now. It's just so right. sweet. And, right. and I just wish everybody else could feel that. It's just, it's wonderful. Um, I just had my 
hand and arm amputated a few weeks ago. So when you're saying, you know, learning how to do things again, you know, I literally, I just had this done. And so my scars aren't even healed. And it's so odd because the, the I guess they call it the stump. It's like so warm right now. Normally it's cold. Uh -huh. and and so I'm just like, oh, this is so great. So I can't thank you enough. I know people are laughing at me right now. That's fine. <laughs> but if it, it, you just, you know, you have such a gift and you're you're helping so many people. And for those that haven't had the ability to say thank you, I want to say thank you. Well, it, it means the world to me. And, you know, I, I just it, just by sharing my story, maybe it helps someone, you know, find the strength, that inner light, that little spark. Uh, to start a wildfire, wildfire. yeah, Not you know, in, in in their life to you know promote healing or awareness or just to push through one extra day, then it was worth being on this podcast with you because I know I've been there and I still have my days too where I'm just you know there's a little bit of a cloud over me and I'm like how do I get out of this again and then it's like oh go, remember back when you had those headaches and you know somehow another the armada of ships came to rescue you well then keep waiting that that ship's coming again so. You know, so I, I hope that, you know, some listeners get, get some, some you know, um, have that little bit of a kick and motivation or not so much motivation, but just uh, that push to, to keep, continue forward just a little bit extra just to get there, to, to get their healing or resolve for what they're suffering or experiencing, because it's always there. It's going to yeah. be there. I cannot thank you enough for being with us on a contagious smile because every smile tells a story. Tell us how we can find you. I'm going to plug you into all of my outlets, but I also want to see where anybody can find you. Absolutely. So you can go to my website um, at carlosthemedium.com or you can just Google Carlos, C-A-R-L-O-S, the T-H-E, uh, medium, M-E-D-I-U-M, but Carlos the Medium, just Google that or carlosthemedium.com, one word there. Uh, or you could uh, follow, find me on Instagram, at just Carlos the Medium. And, uh, you know, go from there. And, uh, you know, uh, if you just want to say hi, that's great. Uh, you know, and uh, I uh, hope I was able to shine light to some, uh, some of the listeners. And uh, I'm grateful for you having me on this uh, podcast, Victoria. And I'm happy to uh, be a part of that family as well. Thank you so very much. I look forward to talking with you soon. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.